Hello everybody, welcome to Needle Workshop. My name is Emily and I'll be your host for today. I hope we have some Legend of Zelda fans here because we have many tutorials for this series coming out in the next few weeks. For today, I'll be showing you how to make Link's tunic from the infamous video game Ocarina of Time. The pattern for this costume is available on our Etsy store and if you are interested in purchasing it, you'll find the link to our store in the description box below. Now without further ado, let's get started. Before getting into the tutorial, please take note of the following information. If you would like some clarity on some of the terms used in this tutorial, you can find all the definitions in the instruction manual provided with the pattern. In this same instruction manual, you'll also find more info on how to properly take your measurements and on how to tweak the pattern for your fit. Additionally, you'll find an array of useful information such as fabric and material suggestions along with the tools used in this tutorial. Also keep in mind that it is essential to make a mock-up in muslin or cheap cotton before making the costumes in your real fabric. Not only does this allow you to ensure the fit is right for you, it will also allow you to make any adjustments directly on the garment. Also important to keep in mind is that your seam allowances are one centimeter wide. Unless specified otherwise in this tutorial, all pieces sewn together will be sewn one centimeter from the edge. To begin with, you'll need to cut out all the following pieces. One front and back bodice in green fabric. One front and back skirt in green fabric. One top collar in green fabric. One bottom collar in green fabric. One top collar in interfacing fabric. One front and back facing in green fabric. One front and back facing in interfacing fabric. One pair of short sleeves in green fabric, one pair of long sleeves in white fabric, and one rectangle of six centimeters by 45 centimeters in both green fabric and an interfacing fabric. Once the cutting is done, apply all interfacing pieces to the right green pieces. Using a thread that matches the color of your fabric, overlock the following areas the side seam of your short sleeves, the side seam of your front and back facing, the side seam of your front and back bodice, the side seam of your front and back skirts, and the side seam of your long sleeves. If you do not have an overlock machine, you can use the zigzag function on your regular sewing machine. Next, you'll need to sew the front and back skirts together, right side to right side at the side seam. Make sure to align all your notches when doing so. As a side note, every single one of your seams throughout this tutorial will need to be ironed open. If it is not mentioned, just take for granted that you still need to do it. Next, you'll need to sew the front and back bodices together, right side to right side, at the side seam and at the shoulder seam. Once again, make sure to align all your notches when doing so. And once again, once this is done, make sure to iron your seams open. Next, you'll need to sew the front and back facings together, right side to right side, at the side seam and at the shoulder seam. My original facing patterns did not have a side seam, but instead were cut higher into the armhole as seen in the video. The pattern was later modified for safe measure. I do apologize if the video is a little misleading. Once this is done, make sure to iron your seams open and then you can overlock the hem of the facing. Next, you'll need to fold your top collar in half, right side to right side, and sew at the center back. Repeat this step with the bottom collar.
Right side to right side, place your top collar over your bottom collar. Make sure to align all your notches when doing so. If you're finding that the bottom collar is somewhat smaller than the top collar, it's because it is. You will still need to align your edges and notches properly and stretch the bottom collar as necessary to do so. Sew the two pieces together along the outer edge. As I'm sewing the two collars together, I'm making sure that my edges stay aligned properly and to do so I'm stretching the bottom collar as necessary. I always do my stitch in one single pass. When you hit the corner, simply lift your sewing foot up and turn your garment around. I personally can eyeball my seam allowance using the markings on my machine. But you can always draw your seam allowances onto the wrong side of the fabric if you think it can help keep your stitch lines straight and sew clean corners. I apologize again for the next segment. I didn't realize my hair was seriously in the way of the camera. Hopefully, you can still get the gist of what I'm doing. Before turning the collar inside out, you'll need to cut some of the excess fabric off from around the collar. Make sure to never cut into the stitch when doing so. Here are the areas that you'll need to cut the excess from. You'll need to cut off the tip of the five corners. You'll need to slice into the two concave areas. And you'll need to cut out small triangular shapes into the rounded convex area. Now you can turn your collar inside out. Make sure to push out the corners properly. I used my scissors to do so, but be careful not to push too hard when using a sharp object since you could break through your stitch. Once turned inside out, align your inner edges and notches and sew the two collars together 7 millimeters from the edge. Next, you'll need to iron your collar flat. Since your bottom collar is slightly smaller than your top collar, the seam line will naturally roll towards the inside, in this case the bottom of the collar. This helps give the illusion of a seamless collar when looking at it from the top. I had originally ironed my collar before sewing the inner edges together, but trust me, it is simpler to do it the other way around. If you sew them first, your seam will naturally place itself where it needs to be. Now, we'll need to sew our collar to our bodice. I've stacked them onto my mannequin to try and clearly show how the collar will be sandwiched between the bodice and the facing. Start by placing the collar to the neck opening of the bodice. Make sure to place your bottom collar to the right side of your bodice. Make sure to align all your notches and sew 7 millimeters from the edge. I would suggest pinning your collar in place to make sure it doesn't shift. Then you'll need to place your facing on top of the bodice and collar. You'll need to place the right side of the facing to the top of the collar. Make sure to align all your notches properly, pin in place and sew one centimeter from the edge. I have personally went in and drawn my seam line in the inner corner to help properly position it right below the collar.
Before turning the facing into the bodice, make sure to cut out all excess fabric without cutting into your stitch. Cut a notch straight into the tip of the center front. As a personal safety measure, I did a second stitch at my center front corner. Cut straight lines into the back rounded concave area. Align the armholes of the left and right side of the bodice and facings together. Sew the bodice and the facing together 7 millimeters from the edge. Sew them together at 7 millimeters from the edge while making sure to align all your notches properly. Once this is done, you can overlock them together. Now you can turn your facing into the bodice and iron everything into place. The next few steps will apply to both the short and the long sleeves. First, sew each individual sleeve to itself at the side seam right side to right side. Once done, press all your seam allowances open. Secondly, roll the hem of your sleeve by one centimeter twice and top stitch into place. If it helps, you can draw your fold lines with a washable chalk or pen. Thirdly, making sure to keep the right side sleeves together and the left side sleeves together, place the short sleeves over the long sleeves and sew them together at the armhole 7 millimeters from the edge. Make sure to align all your notches. Once you are done sewing, you'll need to overlock the edges together. Now that your sleeves are ready, you'll need to sew them to the bodice. Make sure to properly align your notches when doing so and sew one centimeter from the edge. Keep in mind that the crown of your sleeve, which is to say the shoulder area between your single front notch and your double back notch is wider than that of your armhole. You'll need to slightly gather this area to make it fit. If you are having trouble with this, you can gather that area prior to sewing it to the bodice to make it easier. After trying on my bodice, I found the white sleeves to be a bit too loose for my arms. Not to worry, we can always fix our mistakes. I wore the garment inside out and patiently took the time to pin it down to the size I was more comfortable with. I also made sure to undo the top stitch at the hem of my sleeve. Following my pins, I redrew a smooth line as a guide and re-sewed my sleeve. I was very careful not to catch the short green sleeve into my stitch. To remove the excess fabric, I simply overlocked my new seam allowance and proceeded to refinish the hem. Now you'll need to sew your skirt to the bodice. Align them together at the waist, right side to right side, and sew at one centimeter from the edge. Once they are sewn together, you can overlock that edge.
The best way to finish the end of an overlock stitch is to use an embroidery needle to loop the end of the stitch back into the overlocked edge. This makes for a clean and solid finish. Roll in the hem of your skirt by 1 cm twice and top stitch into place. If it helps, you can draw your fold line with a washable chalk or pen. Now we'll need to prepare our belt loops. Take the long rectangular piece and fold it in half right side to right side along the longest length and sew one centimeter from the edge. Center your seam and press it open with the iron. Turn your rectangle inside out and iron it flat. I personally used a loop turner to help me with this. Top stitch 3 mm from the edge on both sides. Next, you'll need to cut out 8 belt loops. To know the length needed, you'll need to add the following measurements. The width of the belt, 5 cm for ease, and 2 inches for the fold on either end. Once you have all your pieces cut out, overlock all the ends. Using the pattern as reference and a washable chalk or pen, mark the placement of your belt loops. Personally, I just measured the placement directly onto my tunic. Right side to right side, place the top part of the belt loop to the mark drawn on your tunic. Make sure to align the mark of the fold that's on your belt loop to the mark on your tunic and sew into place. Fold the loop over and top stitch it into place 1 to 2 millimeters from the edge. Fold in the other end of the belt loop. Align the edge to the second marking on your tunic and sew into place 1 to 2 millimeters from the edge. Once you've sewn in all your belt loops, your costume is finally done. Hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please make sure to leave them in the comments box below. If you like this kind of content, then make sure to give it a big thumbs up and make sure to subscribe for more cosplay tutorials. If you'd like to know more about our upcoming projects, feel free to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. All links in the description box below. So until next time, good luck with your projects.